All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, There's, it's like it's a spring day with a rainbow on it because spring is just around the corner, and it's been it's been warming up, and it's been quite pleasant here. So that's all I had to say about that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live land. This is the Clarion Live weekly webinar. See it and learn it and share it. This is number 454 on our March to 500. Today is March the 6th. It's not the 6th. I didn't change the date there. Are you kidding me? I thought I did. Oh, well, it's the 16th. I left the one out. days ago. How, how the world I left the one uh, yeah, That makes sense. I see what happened there. Yeah, it certainly is not a multiple of seven, is it? It is it okay? Talk talk about something, Mike, so I can fix this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I really like numbers, especially things that are like multiples and fractions and stuff like that. I have a fun time with them. Uh, and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, kids uh, apparently have a hard time dealing with fractions until you start showing them actual objects and saying, you know, like this is a fraction of a pie. And when they can start actually, you know, processing it in that in that sense, then it, it suddenly makes a lot more sense. So now that I'm uh, I'm um, I, I've sort of applied this a little bit to my kids, and they, it actually did seem to work. They really got it a lot quicker. So there you go, fractions. And in this case, it was not fractional; it was just a typo. There you go. <laughs> well done. And and two days ago was Pi Day. Yes. And and, and now and I, I assume this is correct, but but of, of course Stephen Hawking uh, left us, um, and he left yeah. us apparently on on uh, Einstein's birthday, which is also Pi Day. So I thought, how apropos oh for gosh. him to step out in that particular moment in time. I didn't know that. At least I saw it on Facebook. I'm hoping it's not fake news. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't bother checking it, and I, and I, I hate passing like, it along without first uh, uh, vetting the information. But let, let's just hope that it was uh, it was correct, and that I'm not spewing nonsense. Well, we'll we'll just go with it and say, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's a truth. <laughs> it's the truth for the moment. All right. Anyway, all webinars are recorded and available at clarinlive.wikispaces.com at least uh, for the time being. And uh, oh, there, Bruce dropped out and he's back. This week we worked on the dictionary for um, the new Clarion Live website. We worked on that on Tuesday and I you did pushed it up Indeed. to Bitbucket. Oh, I'm dropping in and out. Yeah, you were, you were here, then you were gone. But yeah, we, we pushed it up to Bitbucket. So if anyone's interested in looking at the dictionary, they're welcome to do so. I guess. I'm not sure how that all works. I guess someone has to ask me to do that. I don't think so. You can just clone it. You can get there and clone it. Right? Just find it. Look at last week's webinar. You'll find it. Um, anyway, we'll move ahead on that. And um, we've gone ahead and, and purchased another three months of Wikispaces to give us time to get the new website together. And plus, then we can also post a notice on there once we get it moved over until it expires out. So that's coming along. Kind of excited about that. I think this will be kind of a neat project. All right, your host for today's webinar, Arnold, who is not with us today. John is with us today. Lisa is not with us today. Bruce is with us today. Hello, Bruce. Bruce is sort of with us today. He just went <laughs> offline again. <laughs> okay, so he's in and he's out. Uh, and Mike Hansen is with us today, at least for a little bit. Hello, and, Mike. And, and how are you doing? And by the way, I did uh, check that information. Yes, uh, March 14th was Einstein's birthday. Additionally, he happened to pass away at the same age that Einstein did. So there you go. One more bit of trivia. Oh, my gosh. All these connections. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rules of the webinar. All attendees are muted. That means we can't hear you. Type your questions into the questions box and we'll read them to the presenter. If you want to speak, we encourage you to do so. Please raise your hand and type in the questions box. And finally, eat a balanced breakfast. And start with fruit. Everybody in my family reaches for the carbs, the cereal box or whatever, toast first. I'm 
Like I'm just going to start putting labels on everything. It's, so they reach for the bread or reach for the, the cereal and they see a thing, eat fruit first, just to try and smack them in the head to say, do it. Because in fact, a lot of times they'll just skip it all together. And the, unless I have me wandering through is, have you had a banana or berries or something? So yes, eat a balanced breakfast. So eat a balanced breakfast. It's actually a fairly important thing to do. Mm -hmm. I, I put bananas on my Wheaties. Yes, I do. Yeah, I like bananas and cereal too. They're, they're quite yummy. But see, Wheaties, like a lot of people don't like Wheaties and they might actually discontinue it, but I hope not because it's my favorite one. Yeah, and it, it, they don't have uh, any sugar added, I think. Uh, and uh, and that could be why. Like, it, 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 I don't think we have Wheaties in Canada, but we used to have something called Muffets. I don't know if we have Muffets anymore, but they were quite similar, but like a great big hunk of kind of rolled wheat kind of stuff. It's like a great big sort of a, like a basket, like the, almost looks like a bale, a little mini bale of hay or something. And it's very oh, hard and crunchy. But when you first put water, uh, milk on it, then of course it starts softening up. Huh? So you add a little bit of sugar and mix it uh, much better. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. What is up today? We have announcements and then we have a feature presentation. This is my birthday week because <laughs> my birthday's on Sunday and so it didn't fall close enough. It was just past the Friday, but not quite to the next Friday. Arnold did a he did a whole month, I think, so I thought I'd take two this this year. So this week, um, Andy's with us and he's been doing lots of work. And he's gonna show us. Yep, yeah, right. Always, always doing lot, always doing lots of work. <laughs> You're always doing lots of work. I know he did so much work on, on the uh show cat thing. And you'll be showing us neat stuff with QuickBooks. And I think there's a lot of people interested in QuickBooks integration. So Yep, we're gonna have a look at that today. That sounds cool. All right, uh, announcements. So we had a user group meeting, Andy, you're here. What did we do? What did we do? Um, I think we covered the usual um, updates. I can't actually remember. I really need to start making notes of these. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember. We did the updates. We, Just like me. yeah, we covered. Um, I'm sorry, John. No, I can't remember. <laughs> Okay, so if you want to see what we did, <laughs> go I do to, need to post YouTube. The, yeah, I do need to post a video. Um, I did start the conversion going the other day, so it's just a matter of uh, uploading them now, to be fair, because you have to convert them from the go to meeting format to uh, to um, yeah, like MP4 or so on. Uh, so I've done that, just need to do the actual update, uh, the upload. So I will do that uh, over the weekend, and they will be there. Okay. So Andy posts his uh, webinars up on YouTube. So just go to YouTube and do a search for Niantis and you should find them. They're all there and they are grouped uh, by month in, in the correct order, obviously, uh, which is always a bonus. Uh, so yes, you should be able to see them. Just just remembering, we did cover some of the updates from the report control, um, which are basically which imminent release. And that is the, there's an update to the uh, track bar functionality of the report control. So you can now track the blocks uh, when they have moved and instead of just moving. So basically you can t you can detect both uh, both events now. Previously, it would tell you as you was actually moving the, the block. So if you was doing any file IO to update the blocks, rec you know, relative rec record in your TPS or SQL or whatever your file was, it would continuously be uh, updated, which wasn't very efficient. So now it will tell you when it's moving and also when it's moved. So you've got the best of both worlds. That was one of the updates that we covered. It was, yeah, I remember that. Cool. Um, and then there's some um, Spanish webinars and Roberto is here with us today. I'm gonna open his mic. So I hope he's ready. He's getting ready. He's almost ready. He's almost there. Roberto. Hello. Hello. Hey, I went to the one on Saturday. You did. Was I it interesting? Did. For what from what I understood, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Alex has been working on some stimulus off templates. And so he showed off uh, part of his templates there to to John and John went ahead and you and did it, you know. And I did. Yeah. Really. That was pretty cool. So yeah, so so John's learning Spanish, you see. No, actually, we translated a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, 
I'm learning how to listen to the English part in, with a Spanish accent. That's what I've learned. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, that was good. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It, um, it, it was. Uh, I appreciated uh, Alex Alejandro doing that because um, I needed the help. <laughs> but we might want to do a uh, Clarion Live webinar on that too someday. All right. So you can. You can well, that we did that on Saturday and on Monday. We actually did a little uh, demo of how to let two NetTalk applications talk to each other. Uh, not really talk to each other, but have one as an inline frame inside the other. So in case they're like on different versions of NetTalk, say one's on, I don't know, version 8 and the other one's on 10, the, the, you know, if they can still kind of work with each other. And so we, we created some some way to interact between the two um, applications so that it'll send a, a salted, uh, what did we do? Was it, it's, I think it was SHA-1. Yeah, we, we salted a, a SHA-1 uh, variable that we sent to the other one so that we knew where it was coming from so that just not anybody can actually touch up the inline frame. So. That's what we did on, on Monday, and so. Busy, busy. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, if people want to attend that, go ahead. For me, it was like it was 6 in the morning. Well, this is it. You can see it down here. 6 a.m. See, I got yeah. up early. Right. Slightly for me, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for me, no, it changed next last the next day, yeah, but it was still 7 o'clock here. Yeah. But now it's at 8, right. so. Oh, now it's not going to change that time. Okay. Um, what else we got? We had an open webinar. Um, I'm with uh, Andy. I don't remember what we did. <laughs> we did a lot of stuff. I have everything posted except I don't have this Wednesday's posted, so I'm mostly caught up. Um, so we'll get that one posted up. And But it was a full webinar. I went right up to the as much time as we could do it because we have a webinar that starts at 10 and I think we ended at 10 till 10 or something. So lots of stuff in there. And then there was no net talk user group meeting. That one uh, did not happen this week. So there you are. You're all caught up. And the next week, um, yeah, Bruce has dropped out. I think he's had internet issues. Um, but next week is part two of birthday week. And it'll be myself and Bruce will be talking about disconnected applications for synchronizing data. And Bruce will be talking about how um, NetTalk handles that kind of thing. And then I'll show you how I implemented it. So that's coming up next week. And that brings us to our feature presentation with Andy. So Andy, here comes the screen. Okie dokie. To you. I was waiting for the handy dandy notebook. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, thank you very much. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to cover a quick recap of the Chillcat wrapper, which we launched just before CIDC last year. But uh, rather than jump into some of the, the base classes, which have all had work done on them, we're going to focus on a couple of the task classes and mainly to do with online accounting. So the two classes, task classes that I uh, am referring to at the moment are the Zero online accounting and QuickBooks online. Uh, I did actually want to look at uh, doing these uh, at the stage one uh, for today, but um, oh, sorry, I just just didn't have time to uh, create it. There's still work to do, lots of work to do on the others. But the connectivity, the the, the, the the data flow from and to is now up and running with a very good core um, library behind it. So um, so all the foundation work has been done for both of the products. I'll, I'll finish them a bit more first uh, before looking at the, uh, the Sage 1. But the idea is there will be a task class for Sage 1 as well. So just very quickly, we, this particular product is from a, a product called Chillcat. 
Now they, uh, it's, a, it's an ActiveX, it supports Registry Com and so on. So um, it's very, it's, it's very powerful product, uh, very stable. I've used it exclusively for oh, quite a while now in some heavy communications uh, programs as well. And it just, it doesn't miss a heartbeat. So I'm very, very impressed with it, I have to admit. So at the core of the actual product, are uh, the set of libraries. So let's just bring these into play so we can actually mention, see what we're, we're talking about. They are the core set of base libraries. Okay. And we use, uh, we, the plan is we're going to cover all of these. This is getting worked on literally uh, daily, not even weekly, now daily, these are getting worked on. We've got uh, an extra member of staff and at the moment they're furnishing all the, 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 uh, the classes. So, and then I have to, uh, do my bit on them and then you get to uh, use them that's the that's the general flow so we've got uh, plenty of them done now the OAuth 1 OAuth 2 the FTP um uh, so it's FTP 2 HTTP HTTP request response uh the JSON array and the JSON object uh the date time the string builder there's quite a few the XML and the ones which are just in development now uh, probably I would envisage a couple of weeks before you'll get your hands on them is the email set. So the email, the email bundle, the IMAP, the mailman, message box, so mailboxes and message set. So everything um, all to do with email is all uh, going to be coming in. A, probably won't be the next update because I, I don't want to hold up the current stuff which is uh, ready for release uh, so the one after that so we're currently working on 1.06 and 1.07 anyway that's basically what we're talking about some elements of the actual Chillcat product are chargeable and some are actually free so for example the JSON object is actually free you can go and get it off them download register it on your machine and distribute it with your applications and uh, they don't charge a license for it, which is, you know, very fine, very kind, I think. Um, some parts are paid. So like the rest, the OAuth and so on. So if you click on one of these to have a look and you can see whether a license is required. So you require a bundle license for the rest. If you clicked on, as I say, JSON, that's free. No license required. So yeah, it's, a, it's a very good very good library uh, which you can bring straight into uh, your you know using your applications so we make use of these so they're the base library uh, ba base classes uh, if you will and we're going to uh, they're not all there I haven't done examples for some but there's there's plenty if you look at the install look at what's on your systems if you've got it uh, there's plenty of base classes on there so we create these task classes and like I say we're going to cover the two accounting ones and the idea is that we do the hard work because the, the comms libraries will allow you to do you know, so much, all the base, base classes. But say, let's take an example. If you wanted to talk to Google, Google Calendar, you're going to need to use five, if not six of those base classes. And you're going to need to get them all to talk to each other, pass parameters to each other, make use of each other and so on and so forth. And you're going to have to use them in the, the correct order. So we've, we're taking this approach as, as well as covering all the base classes, we want to bring in the task class to try and help you as well. So the task class basically does all the work. So I'm not going to do all this, but basically to connect to the Google Calendar, it's literally uh the class name so let's call it google it's google.connect you pass it a couple of parameters and it connects you establishes a connection to the google calendar for you you want to download the events it's download underscore events and it will bring you back uh, all the events so that's the type of approach we're using so let's have a look and we'll take um we're going to focus on quickbooks and i'll Give you the similarities on uh, Zero as well. So QuickBooks and Zero are both uh, online accounting systems. Come from very back, uh, very big, very um, well-established backgrounds, and so on. Desktop applications for many years. I'm not sure about Zero was desktop, but QuickBooks obviously was. And like I say, we're also going to be doing a, a Sage one as well. I had a quick look at their API. It looks they're all very similar to each other. So, uh, so we're going to be doing a, a Sage one. Um, 
uh, task class as well to uh, to help out. So let's go into what you need to do. So we look at our example application and we can see here that we're going to need uh, a client ID and a client secret. Now it's QuickBooks themselves which are going to have to give us that. So I will just go into here on another screen, won't be a second. So I have one, here's one prepared earlier. So I've logged in, you go to their developers. The Intuit are the, uh, the developers of QuickBooks. They, uh, you know, it's, it's basically that they are QuickBooks. So you create a developer account, it's all free of charge, of course. And then you will, we will be required to create uh, an application in there. So what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the steps that you would do. I've got a, a particular application here as well. So we're going to say, okay, we just want to just start coding. So we're going to create a new application going to go in and we're just going to focus on the accounting. So that's the sales, the customers, the general ledger slash nominal ledger for the UK, but you know, the basically the ledger, the, uh, the, the, the customers and cash and so on and so forth, transactions. So I'm just waiting for this. Thank you. <laughs> so Yes, it, that's created an application for us. We're going to give it some information now, but notice the disclaimer it's also said here. Basically, you will have to integrate via OAuth 2 or an open ID if you want to be able to use their applications. In the past, you could get away with using OAuth 1, but I think it was, there was a, a date, uh, might, have been, might have been July last year, but basically now you have no choice. You have to go down OAuth 2 if you want to be able to talk to QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks Online, sorry. So, okay, we've got our application. We'll go in and that will have created a couple of keys for us. Now, they have developer keys and they have production keys. Now, of course, there's no production keys here because you have to go through certain steps. Now, I'll take you through those steps. So at the moment, we're not on our Clarion side. We're just in the, uh, the uh, QuickBooks. So we would have our client ID, our client secret. That's brilliant. It's created as a test company, and that's great. You know, and that, this test company in, this, in a sandbox environment are tie, is tied directly to these keys. Okay. So if it's a sandbox, there's a slightly different URL that you have to talk to. And same for the payments uh, API. We're not bothered about that. The class will work out um, all of that for you. The only thing the class can't do is know these two entities because Sony QuickBooks will give you them. So we've got those. Now, the next thing it will need is the redirect URI. Now, basically, it builds one default one in because it gives you a playground. So, for example, if I was to go back up here, for this company, and I would go uh, to our API Explorer. And we don't want that one. We want, say, a sandbox company. So we can see here this is linked to uh, some live companies and some sandbox companies. So I'm going to talk to this one. Uh, let's just play about. So we can actually see if we can talk to data here. I'm going to perform a query on the customer table. That's the company that we're talking to. And our query will be, let's say, select star from customer. So it's very similar to SQL. And we're going to work exclusively with JSON. You can work with XML, but I would question why you'd still want to if you want the truth, uh, especially with you know online comms. Everything's going JSON. You might as well embrace it. And besides which, it's so simple to use. It really is. We'll touch on some of that in a second with some of the results we get back from um, from the application. So, but just let's just try it, and we can see here it's posted it. It's given the 200 back. There's the headers, and there is the body. So. 
basically there's all the data coming back that we want so we know that we can talk to that obviously via its own you know its, its own um, uh, interface so back to our app okay yep yeah, happy to leave that back to our app there's this untitled one which we were just playing about with And the reason that worked was they've put their own redirect URI. And of course, I'm already logged in, so it didn't prompt me for any login credentials. But the reason that worked was that re redirect URI, uh, URL, sorry, URL, URI, um, is, is perfectly valid. So what they want to do, uh, want you to do, is add your own. So in a local, uh, host environment you can basically add something like localhost with a port number and the port number i'll explain why that is important in a second so if you was just doing localhost uh testing uh which basically if you think about it desktop apps really do talk via localhost uh, because the website after authenticating you with oauth2 cannot post back to that you know, cannot find your application via a url so it has to come back to a uh, local host and the and a particular port number so it would want you to add that now we can do um and we can post queries against that and so on but and you'll notice for production keys you've got to post against um a secure website which of course we're not going to be able to do for a desktop application. So we've done a workaround. I've worked with Matt uh, at, at Chillcat, basically the author of Chillcat. And in the very latest version, I'll have to check if he's released it, but the, the, the version I've got, uh, and it is, you know, this is a couple of weeks ago, so I can't see why you know, its release must be imminent, is we can manipulate basically what is passed on to QuickBooks. So QuickBooks wants you to, when, when it's done its authentication, it wants to direct you to a secure website. So you're going to need uh, some kind of secure website to redirect the content back from. All sounds very complicated, all sounds very scary. Genuinely, it really isn't. So we created one, it's on our server, and you're welcome to you know, use that. So basically, it's HTTPS for you know, for, for uh, secure. www.niantis.com, and then we just created a little PHP script, oauth2.php, and that does nothing more than redirect the content back to the local host on the machine. So it's it's literally it's literally used for bouncing off. Nothing more, nothing less. You would probably want to host that yourself so that you're in charge of your own application and your own customers' communications and so on. So you should really host that yourself. But for testing purposes and so on, you are more than welcome to use that. The script does nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what the script does uh, in, the, in the interest of uh, clarity. So it will be a website. Nope, that's the old one. That's the script there, and if we just um, open my notepad, it should open a new notepad, and you'll see it's a very simple redirect. It's going to both, uh, bounce it back to localhost on a listening on port 3017, and all the parameters that are going to, which, which basically you would expect uh, to go with it. So basically, that's all it's doing. No, no rocket science, no, no trickery, just uh, taking the content and bouncing it back onto a local machine. So that's a step you will need for use with production. For test keys and so on, you're not going to need that, but for production, you will. Okay, so let's have a look. Now we've got our application in, in created in QuickBooks. We'll pull that across and let's have a look at this particular app. So I'm going to use the other key, the other application I've already used. So I've got my key, my, uh, my client secret, my client ID. I'm going to bounce it off. Uh, my own server and I'm telling it I'm using the sandbox environment 
So that's going to be testing only because I don't want to go revealing live company data, uh, fully enough, not on a recorded webinar. But basically, uh, we're going to uh, uh, call that. Now, uh, sorry, tick that. Now, what that does is in the class, if we have a quick look here, um, there's a method called set sandbox mode. What that what that will do is behind the scenes it will tell the class which URLs to go and post against, so it knows whether to post against the production URLs or the sandbox URLs. And we saw those in the um, in the uh, Intuit developer interface uh, a few minutes ago. So, but it will calculate them for you. So we can do okay. Let's do connect. That has opened up a window over here. Let me bring that there. I've already logged in, so I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to say not you, so I'm going to log out, and I'm going to close that. Give that a second, because it's obviously waiting for some kind of authentication, so it will wait. I forget um, what timeout I'll give it, possibly 30 seconds. So we'll just let that timeout, and it will tell us, of course, that it can't connect, which is exactly. OK. What you would expect to see is something like this. So you, you, your client will say, OK, let's log in. I will log into my account. Thank you very much. Which company do I want to authenticate again? So uh, uh, basically, yeah, authenticate. So I'll, we're going to use UK2. And we're going to authorize. That will then say, OK, OAuth2 has been granted. So thank you very much. And we can see that our application has now got a connected status. Hey Andy. Yes. Just a quick question while you're at yeah, this point. I've got to ask so, so when you click <laughs> So when you click connect, then it, it's calling up your default browser. Is that what it's doing? Yes. Oh yes. Uh, basically it's doing it's doing um, it calculates a full um string that it needs to pass and there's various different things that it does. Um uh basically I'm just trying to think what the parameters are. Not that you need to know them, but yes, basically it calculates uh, all the particular URL that it needs to uh, execute, including the parameters. It then does a shell execute on that URL. So whatever your default browser is, is what will kick into uh, kick into life. Okay. So if I had a browser in my in my Clarion app, I could just send it to that, right? So it looked like it was all built into my. Um. Program. Technically, yes, you should be able to, because one of the things here, we, we, we digress, let me just, uh, I'm going to purposely do disconnect, because I want to show something that you can do. But I use a system for doing uh, any initial communications to make sure mine are working in the first place, uh, a thing called uh, Postman. Don't know if anyone uses it. Uh, I love it. Really good. So I just downloaded this. Oh, it, it looks it's good. It's it's brilliant, and you can get loads of things for it. Um, so um, we maybe cover some of the usage of this on Monday if you like, uh, or, or or do a not necessarily Monday. Maybe we do another webinar because uh, you can set up different environments to switch between and, and so on and so forth. But anyway, we, we digress. So I can I can switch my keys here to say whether I'm using production or sandbox and what company, which is basically a realm, what company I want to go and query against, and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah. I use this for for all sorts. Uh, easy post. You can see there, Plivo, uh, Twilio, so on and so forth. But to go back to your question, I could say let's get a new access token, and it's bringing up its own window with the login. So yes, it must be able to do. I'm I'm not focused on doing that to be honest, because I've got I've got to go with a more generic, if you will, and I don't want product A having to require product B and you know product C and so on and so forth. Um, but basically, um, yeah, I suppose if you've got a web browser built into your application, so on and so forth, if we can get it to call that, then it really would look a lot slicker. Yeah, and you've got a couple in your product line anyway. We like have, yeah. A couple it, web browsers. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just I don't like, like I say, to force requirements to say, OK, if you have this product, you really need to have this. So I've done with the, the, the more generic uh, let's just do a shell execute, but we can see about um, expanding it to say, okay, if you've if you've got HTML editor, or you've got the the uh, suite controls, then yes, we let's let's bring them into play. Not quite sure how we'll do it, but it can be done. So cool. Okay, let's bring that out of place. So, and Dave Harms has just uh, given a big thumbs up uh, to the uh, postman. 
to the postman but to, to the postman app um <laughs> uh, so yes basically uh he's discovered it a while ago and uh uses it constantly so and, and it's the same here it's my first um uh, it's my first port of call for doing any of the communications prior to um uh, uh putting them you know actually put them in the uh into the classes and so on and so forth okay so where were we up to we had opened our quickbooks app uh, sorry procedure we've got a couple of keys and i've purposely made these a bit smaller um even though i can rotate the keys anyway and it's only demo data you'll get to and you'd need a password as well um i still made them smaller so you can't see all of the key so that if you wonder why they look like so it's purely you know, because of the recording and so on and so forth so the main things you've got to focus on here because at the heart of it if we just to give you a fully understanding of what's going on at the heart of it here is it's a desktop application it's going to basically expect the answer back on local host okay so you can tell it what port do you want it to listen to i think you can leave pass it as zero uh, and it'll just choose one at random but of course we don't want that we want to be able to bounce it um off our, our server and redirect it to a particular port and besides which I, when you set up your application in um the intuit developer environment you also at that point still need to tell it what uh, what url you're going to go on to and if it's local host it has to have a dedicated a port number so whatever you specify in in all the places you're going to need that and if you're using ours uh we've just gone with 3017 I'm not quite sure why. I think uh, plenty of examples seem to point to it, so I just went with it. Okay, so we hit connect. I get my screen. I've already I said remember me, so I will log in, and I will authorize. And that's bounced off our server. We're back, and we're connected. So that has given us um, some pieces of information. It's given us. Um, uh, an access token with an expiry date and time and a refresh token with an expiry date and time it's also given us a, a realm id and the realm id is within quickbooks which realm do you want to talk to and that means basically which company because i had access to two live companies and three test companies so i chose just a second ago the uk uh, sandbox 2 so now that has returned the company number um, of that particular test company that, that particular selector company that's stored in the class so now all of our communications can be done against that so other things you can do is your access token will last for one hour uh, which if you wanted to you know have something sat there um all day the last thing you'd want is probably for them to be okay now i need to go and log back in again oh and now i need to go and log back in again and so on and so off through, throughout the day that's not really user friendly so what you can do is refresh the token so you can see here uh, we're now just on to 1640 uk time so if i refresh token it's going to query back to the server it's refreshed our token so now our current access token expires in one hour from now um so we use a refresh token to generate a new access token you don't have to worry there's a bit of work goes into that you don't have to worry about that all you do is call a method called refresh token and guess what it does it refreshes the token uh the refresh token they provide lasts for 101 days so i'm not quite sure why it's that specific amount but it but it is so you can see uh, today we've just got logged in and our refresh token is good through to um, late june so in your application if you were to store basically you you, you have have them log in um at some point initially because they will need to do that you get your access token you get your refresh token and then basically you would every whenever definitely within each hour go and generate it go and call the refresh token and your application can stay live for 101 days so that's a, a good thing to a uh, good thing to know uh, one of the things we've also done then Eddie. Is, yes sorry quick question on that one then yep. um, so they work during the day and it's refreshing the token every hour and yep. then they 
shut off the machine and go home. Then they come back the next morning and turn on and run your application. Do they have then, to log in again then every day? Is that what would happen? Yeah, because you need to establish a connection in um yeah, yeah. Because you need to establish you have to ensure that you've got a connection uh to uh, basically a um a connection and an authorized connection using your access token in order to be able to call the refresh token you couldn't have if you was to try and refresh the token one hour one minute later so you know 61 minutes later um you wouldn't be able to because your access token had expired so you you need to refresh the token within the time uh, within the before the expiry time of your access token if that makes sense yeah yeah what I do, and I've done for a particular client, and, and I've done on my own systems as well, actually, is uh, thing. what I've done is any any comms like this will normally have sat uh, in a little background task on the server somewhere, usually started up as a service or something like that, but basically um, just sat there, and that will do the comms in and out and so on and so forth, and then you're not really putting any workload onto one particular machine. Now, I'm not saying you want to go down that path, but I'm just giving it as an option. And of course, that would be the ideal scenario for that particular app to keep refreshing your token and keeping your comms live for you. Even if it didn't didn't do the actual comms and it just refreshed your token and put it into a database for your, you, you know, for your uh, different applications to use, you know, that'd be another mechanism. But yeah, you would need somewhere um, keeping uh, your access token current at all times. Okay. So what I've done here is you notice if I was to close this procedure and come back in again, which is quite realistic, it's automatically connected us. Now I've not clicked anything. I'm not doing any post event to the connect because if it was to do that, I would get a hey, presto, my connect window, which I would expect because I've just pressed connect. And that, by the way, calls a method and the method is called connect. So all of the methods are pretty uh, self-explanatory. So let's just close that. Okay, so there's our new token, 1743, one hour from now. And so So again, I come out, I go in, and it just automatically reconnects. So what I've done to help you out there, because it's all about trying to make things as easy and as, uh, as seamless as possible. So what I've done there is, uh, these are just stored because it's a demo app. So you know, don't don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> uh, in the uh, opening up of the window, I get uh, some any settings, and on the closing, I save them. So of course they're, they're all in plain text at the moment, which is which is terrible. You'd never do. You store them off in a database and so on and so forth. But of course this is just an example app. It's just to demonstrate what you would do, and make it nice and easy to, for you to actually see some of the stuff what's going on. So we go back to our, when we open the window, it goes and gets the any settings, that's fine. And then it attempts to call reconnect. Now, one of the things we've done out of the, out of the get any is we've stored, did we have a connection? What's the previous access token? Basically, you can see here, let me just move that out of the way. Basically, the access token details, the refresh token details, the client ID and secret, and the previous realm not quite sure we need the realm actually, but I've, I've set it uh, beyond the safe side. Although, no, actually, I think you would, uh, and so on. And then we call reconnect, and that will take the previous tokens which you've just put into the actual class, and if they are still valid, it'll it'll connect for you and put you straight back into the system as you found it. If they aren't valid, then it will automatically call the disconnect, do itself tidy up, and clear out them um, because what's the point in storing them? They're not valid anyway. So that is a, a, an extra function you've got. So the ones which we've got at the moment, with the main things we've, let's just go back to our running one. The main things we've called here is connect, the reconnect, oh, sorry, as it went into the window, it's called reconnect because uh, it's, it's noticed it's got valid um, details from the previous session. Uh, connect, which is establishing the brand new connection. The refresh token, which refreshes your current token using the refresh token credentials and the disconnect, which will basically kill the connection and clear out all of these uh, particular details. So any questions or anything you want recapping on that to do with the connectivity? Because that's, believe me, the hardest part of any of this is the actual connectivity.
I don't see any questions, but I'm glad you did all the work instead of me. Yeah, well, if you'd have asked me a few weeks ago, I uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have come to that same conclusion. But now it's done, so now I can say I'm happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was some work because officially, uh, if you look on the Intuit developer um, documentation and so on and so forth, they want you to only really redirect off to a web app and so on. There's lots of people asking, can we have a desktop application um, connectivity for um uh, basically, for um, so you just have to see one of the questions come up with a nice, nice comment. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, basically, some of the plenty of developers on there from obviously not Clarion, from all different uh, development uh, backgrounds and tools, asking, can uh, you know, can we get a desktop application to talk to QuickBooks? And they say no, no, basically not at the moment. We are looking into it. It might be something we do in the future. So the magic key there. And I've got to really give thanks to um, Chilcat for this as well, to, to Matt, um, because, of course, he had his um, OAuth 2 uh, class only ever talking to um, to, to um, local host, which, of course, from a desktop application point of view, would be all you would need. You wouldn't need it to talk to HTTPS because local host can't, can't be signed, so what's the point of it? Um, but we found a workaround. The pair of us came up with the same idea, which is a great man to think alike. And we just had to uh, tweak a few settings actually in the Chillcat product to be able to say, OK, we need to emulate, pass on the information to QuickBooks to tell it what we're doing. But realistically, we need to actually tell the class that something else is going on. So we had to do some tweaks. But as you can see, the tweets work really well. So. Cool. William Rollins had a question. Okay, okay. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, so Bill's asking, uh, as a developer, can we set the connection part from Intuit for each customer so they do not see a long list to choose from? So I think you mean, uh, um, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, are you mentioning, do you mean this? And I presume you do. And basically, you wouldn't see a long list because you'd be going in on production keys. So the um, unless a company, I mean, I've got access uh, to two companies because we've actually got two companies, Noiantis and uh, Exante, um, and both we use QuickBooks ourselves. Hence why you saw both companies before. Um, so my account's linked to both test and to. Um, uh, both you know, sorry, test and uh, to live companies, but the keys I'm going in on with linked to all of them, you would be going in on a production key. So basically, in re in reality, in real terms, you would be basically. Let me just close that. Of course, that's just failed its uh, connection. Uh, you'd be having production client ID, production um, secret client secret. When you hit connect you would go, it would recognize what keys are coming in and the list you would see there would only be one company. But unfortunately, Intuit still let make you log in. You can do Remember Me, which obviously I'm doing now, and then it would force you to select the live company, even though you've only got one company, which is a bit crazy. So you've got company ABC, you've only got, you've got the production keys for company ABC. Uh, it will still ask you, ask you to log in and then select ABC to say, yes, I authorize whatever application, I authorize that to talk to it. So you would still need to do that. Now, of course, that's going to error because I was too long. So so that's why, and let's just give ourselves a, another connection. So just connecting on the other screen. I think we're, we've, we've seen the QuickBooks connection screen quite a few times now. So there you go. I've connected on the other screen, and our app has just kicked into live saying, yes, you're connected, and so on. So, We've got a connection, and believe me. Is there any, oh, sorry, we're saying, is there any other questions on the connections and so on? How does how does this work for each individual company? Like, we put this out in our app, right? We've got our client IDs and secret keys up there. Does each yep. customer have to get their own, or how, does, how do they connect? Their yeah, own just things? as we were in, in, oh, sorry, I just clicked on the wrong thing on my, on my window here. So... In in uh, Intuit, which I thought I had somewhere. Let me go back to. I don't want to 
uh, bring my live company into play, you see. So I'm just being very careful on what I bring in. So when we created this app, so to start with, the first thing we did is, is create an application here. So uh, we go in and you would basically, that company would have to create one of these in their QuickBooks and give authority uh, for it to be able to talk to um, to their company data. Because of course, it's accounting data. You would expect them to be, you know, it's a, it's a bit sensitive. So you would expect them to, um, you know, to be uh, security conscious of it. So, but yes, basically they would have to create, or you would have to create for them uh, uh, a login, have them so they get their keys uh, and so on. For production, we'll quickly cover the production steps. So you can see here, I've, we've put our test URLs in. Now to get to production, it wants you to, uh, provide some uh, basically uh, sign up to the end user license agreement and give some policy pri uh, privacy policy which you would do in here you go to the settings you give your application a name so it's a uh, nys demo we can point them to oh here's one i prepared earlier some terms on our website of course you can you, know, you can put anything in here I, I just happen to have some terms but that's totally irrelevant what am I going to let them talk to? The accounting from which countries? So yes, I'm fine. You know, it's a demo. Uh, do you support uh, single sign on? Uh, we're going to say no to that. And I think we've got nine in there. I'll just put from a production and a development point of view. I'll just put those in. From that point of view, I think you can save that. My account profile, which you should go into. I'm not going to go in because I might have some details there which I don't want, want you to see. Um, but now, if you go back to here, you can see this company. Now the production. I'm not going to scroll all the way. I can do, actually, because they're hidden. So the production keys, and they would be allowing you, and now you can see the company, sorry, allowing you to access your data. And here, now, they're the companies. So I've got my Niantis company and Exanti Systems company. So now you're talking to which company do you want that key to be able to talk to and so on and so forth um so that that's the extra step you would do to get your production keys but all the other things from our from the application point of view exactly the same so you would just do this one step um to be able to get um company abc your one of your customers you know customer abc to get them to be able to access their data remotely you would have to go through this step Okay, so I, I would do this part. Realistically, yes. <clears throat> yeah. And it's not that hard, to be honest. It's, you know, it takes minutes. So, but yes, you would need to do that. Okay. Could do with uh, maybe creating some how-to videos on this. <laughs> so. But. Yeah, I could see so so you have to talk with each customer, I guess, and get them signed up on it. Yeah, yeah. So, but from your application point of view, once you've got that, all you're going to need is you store these two things, which you just saw you would have production or development. So you could have your production ones. Um, you, I don't know, you'd hard code that or, or, um, or hide it. And like I say, you, you're welcome to bounce off our server. That's no problem. If it's something under your own, then chances are you've got your own you know, uh, security you know, SSL certificate on your web anyway. Or if the customer's big enough, maybe they've got their own. Um, and you just want that script. And it's... You know, it's a PHP script that you can put it in over different languages as well. It's so simple. It's just basically, it's just a redirect, which you can do in if it's Linux. You can do in a HD access file. So um, yeah, it's very simple. Okay, so because I'm conscious of time and we've got to look at zero as well, uh, let's have a quick look at some data. So we can issue. Now you have to look at all the documents and so on and so forth to see some of this from um, uh, from QuickBooks. But we can see here, I could do a select star from customer. And I can run that query. And hey presto, I've got quite a lot of customers back. So now we can manipulate some of this. I'm gonna actually quickly divert off here to show you some of well, the JSON because it's perfect because it's just give us quite a lot of content so i'm going to set the clipboard with that go out of that and i'm just going to quickly go into our json um, example not that you need to i i use it a lot but there is a there's an old there's a million and one different json viewers out there this particular product um got no affiliation with it 
I just happened to find it online, uh, put it through its paces, and it's brilliant. It's really good. So I would, you know, I, I would if you if you're looking for basically something to uh, use and use in JSON, which if you're doing any comms online, you, you know, you're going to be down this route. You're going to be getting your hands dirty in some of this. Then it's not a bad tool. It lets you paste in, go to the viewer, and you can see all the oh let me scroll back a bit all the particular elements so we can see here that we have the uh, the, the payment structure is a query response within that we've got an array of customer within that we've got our array elements and we can see in here this is the data coming back to you and so on and so forth so yeah quite a quite a lot and so on and that is for the particular customers there must be 31 in this uh, yeah there is 31 in this uh, in this test company Okay, so that's a, just a little viewer, um, which is coming handy. So I use Postman quite a lot, and I use this JSON viewer quite a lot because we do uh, comms in all different uh, APIs. You know, uh, PayPal, Easy Post, Zero, QuickBooks. Um, oh my days! So many I can't remember. Betfair. There's just so many we do. Okay, so we're going to actually paste that into the JSON object because remember now you've got the JSON uh, class as part of the Chillcat. So we'll load that into the JSON object from the display. So I think pasted in. And some, we, we, uh, I was going to uh, discuss this with Bruce on the, on the thing. There was this chat, uh, and I, I commented on it uh, on the uh, on the news groups. And I've used the JSON, the built-in JSON, and I've used some uh, alternatives and so on and so forth. And they're all, you know, there's pros and cons to all, uh, and so on and so forth. I'm ob obviously more averse to uh, more, more more familiar sorry with with my own products of course i'm going to use those and i'd expect each to do their own i'm just giving you basically some of the flexibility that you've got so we've got just a json string which we just pasted in and we might want to get to oh let's have a look i know there's one in here um i don't know which element it is but there's a display name so let's say i want to go to the query response the customer I'll say the fourth customer and the display name of the cus the fourth customer. So I can just say, okay, get me the query response customer. Uh, now it's zero based, so it happens to be array element free because it's but it's a fourth one. Dot display name. What is that? And it's Cafe's Consulting Company. Now if I was to say the zero, get me the first one because we can see that on screen. I would expect it to be Amakomi International, which it is. There it is, display name. So, and let's let's see if we can manipulate that. So we'll say now nah, let's let's have a look at it and we'll change that to Clarion Live. So now we're going to say that particular element, query response customer zero, which is the first element of the array, display name. Go and update that. There we go. That's now just changed to Clarion Live. So we've just manipulated. No queues. We're talking about nested arrays here because we're on our first one. And of course, you might have multiple nested arrays um, in a particular example. Uh, there's no uh, there's no queues, no group structures, and so on and so forth. It's just straightforward. Load it into the JSON um, object using the JSON class, and you can get to basically any stuff. You can build, of course, and you can read and write literally from the data that you get you've got functions like um get the array count because of course we use that so you've got to um, get the uh, get the array count of one particular thing which comes in so i can say okay well we do actually in the zero in the uh, quickbooks class we need to know when the customer comes back how many array elements there are so that we can make use of them so there's get array uh, count I think it's get rate count or get rate total, something like that. Um, you can say what the types are, so we can see. Okay, that would return a string. That um, that would return an array. So if you asked what type was customer uh, quick response dot customer zero dot metadata, it would bring you back that it's an array, which it is. Oh, sorry, no, it's not an array. But if it was, it, it would bring it. So you've got integers, numbers, uh, booleans, nulls. So we could say, okay, let's set that and we'll actually update it and set it to null. Now it's changed it. So it's all JSON compatible. Well, it is not JSON compatible. It's all true JSON code. Um, so we could actually, 
I could say we could load an example of, but we just actually just put one in. But basically, you can you can play about and you can clear. We could build. So let's, we'll say this cleared our JSON and we'll just say okay, let's let's go and update that. And now we'll build another array element, and we'll have that as Niantis and update that to it. So now we've been literally two commands because that's all I've executed. I've built a full JSON structure. So that's what I was saying in, in one of the things on the news groups is you've got a lot of power of the tool set built in. And remember, their JSON object is actually free of charge. You can actually make use of it. You know, um, it's not it's not part of the paid bundle. It's actually part of the free bundle. So that's that, that's the JSON. Let's go back to our QuickBooks because we're running out on time. It's auto connected. We've done a select. Um, that's good. And we can select star from, and I think they've got account as per their documentation. And we can see here, now we're getting our general ledger coming back. So we've got some information about it and so on and so forth. Now I've not a quick, uh, a quick example together. Um, done a download. I've just created a, there's loads of other fields. If we, I'll bring it into, uh, into, into play so you can actually see it. We look at the class just to show you what it actually brings back. And that is a, a customer definition. So if we was to come down, you can see basically, and we'll look at some of the code for this in a second, but basically that is as per the QuickBooks definition. Okay, now there's still work to do on, on this, but we're gonna keep uh, plugging away at it and let you do various different things. So I know Bill, uh, Bill's online. One of the things Bill wants to do is bring down um, uh, basically tax rates, bring down general ledger, and do, a, do do post journals. So so you bring down a bring down the general ledger, so you can see. Okay, I know internally they, they work heavily on these IDs. So you can see ID one is uh, maybe cost of sales, and ID two um, is um, debtors control, something like that. Um, so we're going to basically expand it. So I will I shall press the uh, download all, 31 customers. It's brought them down and it puts them into a queue. Now I'll show you the code for this in a second. Um, there's our queue, and let's have a look at our QuickBooks demo app. So we've got here. Here's one I prepared earlier. I'm logged into Company Two in QuickBooks. We'll go to here's QuickBooks customers, and somewhere down here, somewhere please, is Niantic Limited. Yeah, that's good. Go back to our app, and somewhere in here, it's Niantis again. So we've got, yep, there's Niantis. Internally, it's known as uh, 68. Okay, you wouldn't have a browse like this in yours. You'd, you'd, you'd store the data and so on and so forth and, and store these IDs against the actual customer table and your general ledger against the general ledger table and so on and so forth. I'm showing this in, in raw mode so you can see, get an appreciation of what's going on. So we've got um, Niantis, I'm going to change it. And notice this, this is important, the sync to uh, token. So we're gonna change it, and I'm just gonna say it's uh, Niantis uh, version two. There you go, the new and upgraded. It's come back, it's changed it here, and it's updated the sync token to 19. Okay, if I go back to my QuickBooks now, just hit refresh. And scroll down, and now we've got 90th version two, which is just what we've done. So that's great. Now we'll go into QuickBooks itself. I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to say, no, it's now online. I'm changing it to version three. Okay. Yes, it is. I can see that. Let's move that out of the way. Now, if I was to try and go and update this now, it wouldn't work. And that's because that sync token is actually version 20 now not 19 basically it's an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incremental um, check for that particular record so if i was to go and update that it wouldn't work what i would do is say okay let's go and download the latest version of that ah now it's version 3 and sync token is 20 now i'm allowed to go ahead and change it and i've got it on the other screen i refresh the other screen I'll take my word for it. I'll bring it in so you can see it. So there's no trickery. There you go, version four. So there's your two-way two-way comms between the two. So you've got um, 
QuickBooks class talking to QuickBooks itself and of course QuickBooks online being changed and the class bringing out those details local. To accomplish the, that, let's have a quick look at the code. So I have in our example, I've created a group and I just created it from a predefined structure because the class has got a perfectly good structure built um, called the customer queue. So we'll use that. Likewise, I'm going to make use of a local group as well. And that's going to be based upon the customer group. OK. The download all. Basically, calls QuickBooks, uh, the class uh, called download customers, and we pass it a queue. It does need to be of that structure, so you can pass it a queue, but the, the queue is defined locally in your app and so on. Uh, we've got our queue. We have a look at what's been brought back. If it's minus one, there's no customers. It's not been able to do it. If it's zero, there's just no customers, which is perfectly valid. You just haven't got any. So a bit poor. <laughs> and of course, otherwise, you're going to get the message. That gives us our number of records. So that's good. So we know that we're good. And our queue has been, uh, I think I just do a display, do I somewhere? No, I don't even do a display. But basically, that queue is the one you see on screen. So that's our download. On the change, Oh, if I want to re-download one, then just like we had download customers, I'm just going to go and select the one uh, in the list. And then I'm going to call, um, pass it an empty group, and which is local. And I'm going to give it the ID of the customer that I want to go and bring down. So that's going to bring down just one customer, and it's going to populate that group with the details from QuickBooks. And then all I really do is just say, okay, the queue structure equals the group structure, put put it to the group. So I'll just update the group, uh, the queue, sorry. So that's, that's very simple. So you, I like to keep everything nice and simple. So when we do the general ledger one, it will be download general ledger and or download accounts probably. Um, and for the update, last but not least, again, we get this, the record we're on. We prime up the local group with the queue that we've um, we've just got the done the get on. I just created a little source procedure called update customer. Of course, you would have your own um, screen with all your fields and so on and so forth. And then basically, I pass into that uh, the group. And what am I doing? I'm changing the record. I'm inserting the record. So, but again, it's demonstration purposes. You would have this in your own anyway. So I pass that in, and as long as it says yes you know they press the okay button then i basically um call the yeah so that's if they, they've pressed okay to my local procedure to say yes go and update it and they have done then i call update customer and you pass it the group and what you want to do with it so i'll change insert and so on so you could prime the group up and insert from there you could prime the group up and change from there and so on so i prime the group up I've done change record and what it will do is if it fails it will tell you and so on so it will return false and you can query basically what the error was but if it returns true it means it's done it and the new updated version and more importantly that new sync token, token which you will need uh, will be returned in the group that you just got so then I just go and put that back into the queue so just to demonstrate that to make sure we all, we've all got that in our, you know, which I'm sure we have. I'll just go back and basically here we are and we're on version 21. I change it. I'm going to go version 5. It's done it, hopefully. Yeah. So it's put it back in and now it's updated the sync. And that has been done. I've primed up the group. I've passed it into the, uh, the update customer. And because it came back as true, it, it puts the results because it's a matching structure. Remember, it's a full customer. You pass it a full full customer. Uh, you can do partial, of course, uh, and it will return you back uh, that particular full customer. So we get that back in our the group that we passed in in the first place, which means we've got the very latest information uh, and we can just go and act on that accordingly. So in, in reality, in terms of your application, what you would do there is you would go and update a customer, call that routine, so you call that method, it comes back and says true, and you will store the, the, the sync token. Or 
realistically, you would really want to query the customer first, get its information local, go and do your update and so on and so forth, and then go and call it. So you should really always do a query first because you don't know if somebody else online has gone and changed that record. So best practice would really be query, update, uh, yeah, query and then update really. Any questions? Because we're going to quickly move on to zero because I'm looking at the time. Any questions on that? I don't see any. Looks really good. Very good. Okay. Whew, take a quick sip. Just one second. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of information there. There was, yes. Okay. So, zero. So, I've got here's one I prepared earlier. Just let me close my other screen. can't get to where I want to so that's uh, just one second okay here's one I prepared earlier so let's bring this one into play so zero again just like QuickBooks they offer you a demo company I think they only give you one though um, because I used to, I, I tried out a, a demo, I nearly, it's zero, I nearly went with it, to be honest, it's a, it's a really good um, online accounting system, very popular, I think, I think it's Australian, but they are worldwide, and used, you know, quite a big user base, you know, quite, quite powerful, quite, uh, quite successful. Um, the only reason I went with QuickBooks, literally was down to price, QuickBooks cut me, um, oh, New Zealand, Joe, Joe Lewis just said the New Zealand. God, they'll hate me for saying Australian then. Sorry about that. Um, basically, yes, uh, the, it was down to price. QuickBooks cut me a deal for an 18-month special offer. Um, so that's the only reason. Up until then, I was going to go with zero. So, you know, they are very, very similar to each other. So they give you a demo company. I'm logged in. I've got my demo company. That's great. Okay. Just like QuickBooks, you need to go to their developer portal. Okay. And I'm going to go, uh, okay, well, I'm going to regenerate, although that's only a test app. Uh, I did it earlier, so I'm not really going to lose sleep about that. And in fact, what we will do is I'm going to um, delete that app. There you go. The have just made a note of the keys. Uh, pointless, they've gone. So just like uh, QuickBooks, you've got their look at their play data and here we are and the play data and so on and you've got a developer uh, with lots of uh, documentation telling you about the structures what you can expect back um, historically when i first did the zero because i've already done this full um oh sorry just got a question Ah, okay. Uh, someone's just asking, can we post this video uh, as soon as possible? Because they're interested in the QuickBooks discussion. So that's that's John, John Farmer. Uh, yes, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it up um, as soon as possible. In fact, I'm recording it. I've just noticed um, I'm recording it as well, which must be my settings on auto. So I'll I'll leave it converting and we'll get it uploaded. So you'll it'll be online. Clarion Live, they're on the uh, Clarion Live usual uh, video place, and the Noyantis ones are on the Noyantis uh, on YouTube on the Noyantis channel. So if you just search for Noyantis, you'll see our user group meetings, and you'll see this one as well. Okay, uh, yes, Zero, Zero. Um, up until recently, all their comms were in XML, and that's fine. I've I've done a full uh, interface for a uh, client, um, which basically you know uh, made made use of all you would expect, bringing down the general ledgers, bringing down the uh, tax rates, the customers, uh, suppliers, their client balances, bringing down their invoices and credit notes, and then basically letting you post invoice and credit notes and uploading, obviously affecting the journals, uh, the, uh, the the ledgers up on zero. So it, uh, I've already done all that work and so on and so forth uh, for an application for a, for a particular client. All of it was XML perfectly fine and so on and so forth but i think it was mid mid last year might have been july august i forget but basically mid last year um they also um give the option to have all the comms in json so i automatically switched to that because i don't see the point in, in going down the xml route when 
Jason's the, you know, from an API point of view, is by far the uh, the better option. So we go back to this. So if you want to create a zero application, what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, it's a private application and for our application only, so our, for our desktop app that is, and we're going to call it um, CL demo, Clarion Live demo. I've only got some demo data, so I'm going to say, let this one app hook on to that data. So if you did have two companies, three companies, you create an app per company, if you will. Now, it needs a certificate and we haven't got one. Oh dear. So we need to create a certificate. There's loads of online uh, utilities um, to do them, but I've created one here. So let's have a quick look at what's in this folder. So I don't want the private key and I don't want the certificate and I don't need the PFX file. But okay, so I've just got the actual um, the open SSL command line and I've created a little batch file to uh, help us out and it's called create certificate. So and I think I actually ship this with the uh, with the example. So we'll do create certificate. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So, which, com which country are we? So, we're GB. Uh, we are in Nottinghamshire. Uh, we're in, you know what the full works? We're in Kirkby and Ashfield. And it's Niantis. Uh, development and Niantis.com. And we'll have admin at Niantis.com. So, all very straightforward give it a password yes we do want to give it a password because you should really do anyway so I'll give it a password and I will confirm that password and now if we have a look hey presto we have our certificate so like I say that batch file um, I think that folder actually so on, does come with our example app so let's find that folder Here's one I prepared earlier. D um, app example chill cat. Okay, okay, there's our certificate. So we'll just drag that onto there. Yep, and we're going to read their terms and conditions because we don't really have much of a choice. Thank you very much. Now we've got that. Um, let's get rid of that get rid of that and we will let's look at our key so I'm just going to pull this if you don't mind just on the other screen not trying to oops not trying to hide anything let's go back to our example going to zero and we've got basically as, as we said here a minute ago we have got our demo our application what company is it going to be tied to which is the demo company in this way and we've got a, a key and a secret now this uh, isn't OAuth 2, so it's going to be a little neater. Um, so let me just put this in. So put that, the key, put the secret in. Okay, okay, it's, that's the folder where the PFX file is, because you want to need the PFX. You need the certificate in order to register the company in the zero developer environment, then you need the PFX at runtime uh, to authenticate the details. So you need the consumer key, which zero is giving you, the secret, which zero is giving you, the certificate, of course, you only need the one when you register the company with zero. You need the PFX at runtime and you need the password. With that, hopefully, we can get a connection and we've now got a connection into our zero. And if we were to do some queries against that, their query is slightly different. And we'll have a look. And basically, we'll say we want to query. Now, they don't have what we term a customer and a supplier. They have contacts. So we'll query contacts. Technically, it should be slash contact, but uh, contacts. But if you don't put the slash in, the class will recognize it, what, you want, what you're trying to do, and it will put it in there for you. So don't worry if you don't put it just like before got our json and now we've got a load of contacts back but they are both if we look down here as part of the content um just trying to find it 
So you can see you get an array of addresses. You get a PO box, a street, and you do get a third one as per their documentation. And you get an array of phones. You get a direct dial, a default, a fax, and a mobile. So there's four, yes. So we go down, and there we have that is a supplier and is it a customer? So that isn't valid. If we were looking for customers, this one we're looking at here isn't valid. So you can put a where clause. If you don't put one in, it will give you everything. If you do put one in, it's again, as per their documentation, we can say, is customer equals true? Now if we run that, that's different. Just to, let's just cut that out. So that is uh, 2631 or whatever. It's different. Put it right back in. Oh. <laughs> Not giving us in a particular order, but okay, fine. Um, that's your data. So basically, you are getting different data back depending on um, the, the the queries that you pass to it. Now that class, um, let's just take a look at this one again. This is our task class, so it does all the work for you. Um, we go into here is the zeros equivalent of the customer sorry of the contact and you have your all the things that you would on zero so you've got your name first name and last name email address so on and so forth and you've got uh the that brings you back in the arrays so the addresses which they only allow up to three so these are defined as per their specification they allow up to three addresses uh, P.O. Box, the street, and let me get it for you as per their docs. Uh, addresses, address types are P.O. Box, street, and delivery. So, so they only allow up to three, so we can define the array um, to, to their particular spec. And of course, if they change these in the future, I'll, I'll make sure that our products change accordingly. Um, phone numbers, you can have four, direct, mobile, um, I forget what the others were, but we, we just saw them in the data. And then you can have up to five contacts. So basically what you're seeing there is, again, we've got that particular structure um, and the, the, the methods that we're just doing for you now are the download contacts. Um, internally, just like the QuickBooks one, you do have the functionality um, to basically, it, it's got generic. When, I, when I, At the start of tonight, I did say, we, um, we we basically have put all the backbone into each of these classes. So you've got a very strong common class, which goes out to all of our products. On top of that, you've got the chill cat class, which is all of the base chill cat stuff. Uh, base is the wrong word because there's 98 base classes, but you've got the, the, the core chill cat class. And then on, on top of that, you have the individual ones for each of the products. And in there, we've actually gone with generic, so we've gone query. So you, we can perform a query against any qu particular entity in, qu in uh, QuickBooks. Likewise, the update, um, just trying to think, it's read, sorry, the read. The update, that's very specific because it has to be because it's taking a particular type of data. But the read, again, you can just pass it the particular, just like a query, you can pass it the content of what it is you want to go and read and it will go and bring it you back. So we've gone with this generic approach. The same with uh, zero as well. Um, and that's really where we're, where we're up to. So you can see, you know, there's work to do. I don't like to say there's not, but hopefully you agree. You know, now it's, it's you know, there's a really good, strong, backbone in the system already and now it's just a case of uh, repeat and rinse for some of the the, the more common stuff the suppliers the the, the ledgers the journals the, the the contacts for a customer that type of thing um and to do the posting of them which like say for zero i've already done in an application so they'll come in time and so on and so forth and that's that's really it uh, from the quickbooks and from the accounting point of view if you will don't forget We've also done these other task classes, so um, that will give them a quick plug. But just like the the uh, the, the uh, others, you have a basically a, a key for Google Calendar, and this is going in on a service account. But of course, you can go in on the OAuth two account as well, just like we do with QuickBooks. So we connect, we download, and there's our Google Calendar data coming back to us, and so on and so forth. Do need to put a bit more polish into this 
but it's not the point. The the thing is, you've got the comms, and out of any of these, the comms is where the the work is, and now the the, the comms is there and it's done. So now it's just a matter of putting the extra methods into, uh, you know, you, you you do what you want to do. Uh, and of course, we we did a, a pretty good. Um, we've got Dropbox as well, so you can uh, give it the connectivity, download, and we've got a couple of uh, entities for our Dropbox. So we're doing these task classes. You know, we we we're, we're so busy. We're doing the the uh, the base classes, like I say. They're all they're coming on week in week out, and the email, which is spread across five or six different base classes, um, is is coming along nicely. Yeah, the FTP has just been done, um, and uh, we've done these task classes built upon the base classes. So for SMS, we've got some extras to add on to here and all for the other gateways. But sending an SMS is as simple as a connect, um, a hello. I'll hold my phone close to the mic. Hopefully, we'll get it. Send. There's my message. We can see it's been queued. Oh, thank you very much. I happen to get two messages at the same time then, but one's from my wife. Um, <laughs> good timing. Uh, if I was to refresh sorry, uh, refresh the SMS, we can see. Oh, I need to highlight it, sorry. Yep, now it's been delivered. So you can query the status updates. And to do that, it's literally one call to send SMS. You say from, to, and the message. And if you want to do a bulk, you prime up a queue and you just put number, number of records in there and you just say send and send it a queue and it will go off and send bulk, bulk send your data. So hypothetically, like so. In fact, go on, let's use, let's use some credits. Okay, so that's gone. Oh, now they've, now they've gone. They're all queued and let's do a refresh. Some have gone. Now I'm still waiting for the others to be delivered. They've been delivered. Still waiting for a couple. But so basically that we're, we're drawing to the end of the uh, the the, the cat update, which means we're more or less on time. Any questions on what we covered, especially with the zero? We we went quite through, fast through that. I don't see anything on that one. I'm just not even familiar with the zero accounting at all. But it's it's worldwide though, huh? Yeah, yeah. In fact. Um, particular client I did the work for, um, I think it was their US customers what were driving it, if you want the truth. Hmm. Might be worth looking at. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and the natural, from a, um, hopefully, that is now telling me that it's been delivered. Yes, that's, uh, that was, that's been delivered. Uh, the, um, the, 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 I'm just trying to think, the, the natural, other task class which we'll consider doing, uh, what we'll, we will do, will be the um, QuickBook, uh, not QuickBook, sorry, um, Sage One, because as I say, I look, yeah, I looked at theirs. Um, but we've got plenty of others. Uh, the PayPal, I need to finish some of that. I need PayPal myself, actually, so um, I need to finish that one. Uh, it's more it's more the example and a bit of tidying up in the class behind the scenes. So, but yes, as we, when we first launched this, last when was it late september last year we said we was going to do a, a number of uh, task classes which are these you know the higher level helpers if you will um and we, and we are, well, we all do you know the dropbox is there we need to think of you know put some more calls on there but you, there's nothing you you can't do with dropbox that, that class technically wouldn't let you do at the moment um google i've already got that working brilliant really obviously with um, our uh calendar control of course so we've got uh, examples of where the two are directly linked so the calendar has got tps data but as you're moving stuff it's updating google and vice versa as google's changing it's updating the calendar which is updating the tps so it works quite nice but yes basically we will be doing lots of other examples you know the um twitter and uh ebay and and, and those particular uh, uh ones as well but it's, it's like anything it comes down to time <laughs> So I think uh, Bijan's got some uh, questions. Um, which fields do you use to think? Um, 
Okay, okay. So, so we've got a couple of questions there. Uh, can we open the mics up, John? Is that okay? Yep, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, so go on off. Uh, where are we? Vision. Okay, okay. Uh, do you have a microphone? Hopefully, you do. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, John. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Andy. Hi. Okay. Yes. Um, so I've been using uh, the QuickBooks des desktop version uh, for for many years, and there there is a uh, f there's a field customer name in uh, QuickBooks. You know, like for example, just using the customer uh, table uh, for for this uh, question, there's a customer name that normally we use to uh, match the uh, the records in our uh, table. You know, and and sync. The, the records, you know, like if I want to export something from our end to there. Uh, is there, what are you using the QuickBooks Online to um, okay. to find the related record? The ID. The, there, uh, the, there's an ID, okay. So those two are key to all of the actual linking for all of the different tables. Okay, so we you have will, to store you that. Need, you will need them in a pair. Yes. So when uh, for the in the beginning, what we need to do is, um, if let's say one of our customers want to um, start uh, exporting to QuickBooks um, the, their invoices, uh, first we need to make sure we put this ID that's stored in the online version uh, in in our system so that it knows which account to update. Correct? Yes, you should do. Yeah, yeah. We are one off. We have to store that. What, but you could download the whole list, like like here now. Select and do mm -hmm. uh, just do, do your one-off match. Hopefully, yes, your, yes. your data does match up. I know when I did it for zero originally, um, there was a couple of fields you could actually tie in, tie uh, or map match up and uh, tie in on. But um, I think with QuickBooks, you'd be better doing it with uh, the ID and the sync token. Just has to be the correct token if you want to do updating. If it's just to bring the data down, you only need the ID and then you link, you know, one to the other. So on an invoice, the customer ID would be your ID, the here, you know, that type of thing. Yes. I, I don't know if you've got, gotten this far where, you know, if you have like say an existing invoice that you've already, um, or a payment that you've already recorded in your Clarion app and then um, say there's a change and you need to um, uh, report that to QuickBooks and then you need to update the QuickBooks accounting. Uh, do you know if they I'm allow not, that or do they close the the invoice or do you know? Uh, no, I think you can change it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll know in time. I know in zero you can, but I think in QuickBooks you can as well. Of course, like anything, um, and within our own systems, there would be validation. So, for example, uh, updating a customer. If I tried to update a customer and said the email address didn't contain an at sign, it would error because as per the QuickBooks documentation, the email address, if specified, must contain an at sign. So there's validation in there, you know, they, they, for their data integrity, just as we have in our own systems. So, you know, you must ensure that you do meet that, their criteria. But um, I do think they allow you to modify the transaction. From, from memory, I mean, it'll be one of the tests I'll do when I come to doing the, you know, next will be bringing down the general ledger and so on. And then following that will be posting of uh, invoices. And that includes updating of invoices as well. Because, but as I say, the work, the work to date is far greater than the work going forward for those type of things because all of the work to date is to get this, the whole comms nice and working and nice and easy, if you will. So, you know, downloading, I could select from account there. I've just brought yeah. down the general ledger, you know, so it's that type of thing. It'd be very, very simple. Yes. I mean, uh, one of the challenges for us is always, you know, we are doing all the work here as far as, you know, recording a payment and processing a payment, yeah, invoicing. And now our, our customer says, you know, we I want to keep the same data for myself and my QuickBooks. The challenge is always, you know, syncing the two and keeping the two, you know, uh, exactly the same, you know, with the same information. Uh, I, I'm wondering how some of, uh, you know, other Clarion uh, developers are dealing with this because you know, obviously uh, it's a challenge because, you know, you're, uh, you know, issuing a credit memo here in your app and uh, you need to have the same transaction in 
in QuickBooks, and that's just uh, uh, it's a lot of work to sync the two. For me, it's like always, you know, uh, writing a lot of code just to deal with the synchronization. You know, uh, sometimes you know the customer finds that it's much easier just to uh, take a transaction and uh, you know just do a monthly sales journal entry in uh, in QuickBooks to get it done and just keep the detail in uh, in, in the Clarion app. So it's, it's I guess it, the, the customer has to make that decision, but we, for us it's the challenge of syncing the two if they want to go that way. You know, with the credit memo, debit, debit memos, changes but, to the existing voices. Yeah, um, and only really you would know the, the, the true answer to that because only you know your, your own system. As I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, you could have it where it's done basically where you as, as your system creates uh, ch changes something like you know creates an invoice then you put it on a stack and you have a comms processor in the background which does that for you and likewise brings it down and puts information on the stack for your you know to to update your system and so on you could work that or you could have it so it's live on the terminal so as that terminal says okay i've recorded a sale hey presto it goes off and posts it straight to quickbooks straight away and maybe just records the exceptions so i've got a couple of scenarios Another project I'm doing, uh, we spoke about it on Monday actually, just inherited a system, but that will be updating zero, uh, but they want it live. So as different terminals are doing different sales, they want that going straight into QuickBooks live. So at any one time, your QuickBooks should only be, you know, a, a few seconds behind. Yes, correct. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. This is more of a design question, you know, and how do you want to design it? How do you want to set it up? I was just wondering if other, how other, uh, developers are dealing with this, you know, like you, you could, you're writing, so you're running, running a service then that, that does the update, right? So it's on one, the on, one, on one of the applications I am, yes, on one, yeah. on one application. So different ways to skin the cat, I guess. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, I think I have to make, and do you know if the, these, um, the, the API will work with the uh, enterprise version? Do you know the if the API? Ooh, you mean quick? What? So not quick books quick enterprise. Oh, I don't know. Sorry. No, I've just just taken a look yes. at quick books online. Yes, because we have some customers that are going to the they're, they're, they don't want to give up um, their their enterprise. I know that that with the desktop you can't you can't use that. From what I've seen, they're kind of like discontinuing the support for the QuickBooks Connect. So kind of sort of like they want to well, want you to go on the online version. But I was wondering if the enterprise edition will support the the API. Um, I genuinely don't know. I don't want to really okay. comment because okay. I haven't a clue. <laughs> no problem. Okay, I just wondering. I'll I'll research in my. I did some googling. I couldn't find anything, but I thought I asked. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. But it looks really good. I this is definitely the direction I'm going to go. <laughs> I know that I have to go this way. Good. So always, well, there's we'll always make customers it as asking as for integration. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, John asked uh, particular products. Is John still here? Uh, John, do you have a, a microphone? Do you want to speak? Let's put you on the spot. I, I like doing that. <laughs> do you have a, a microphone? If you do, uh, your mic is open. Yes, uh, can you hear me, guys? Ah, hi, John. Yes. Um, uh, as uh, I mentioned in my comment earlier, um, I came into this conversation or this webinar kind of midstream. Uh, found some, you know, heard some very interesting things. So just wondering if you could recap uh, for for the for this you know for these accounting interfaces, which is something I'm just starting to get into. Okay. So good timing. What uh, what are the Noyantis products that are required to make this happen? Okay. Yeah. Very good question. Well, uh, we let me just go on to um, the, the, this is the wrapper template for uh, the Chillcat product. So let's just go bring that into play so you can see it. So it's just a single product um, spread across multiple base classes, if you will. Um, so just to point out, some are paid and some are free. So but if you buy the bundle, you get everything anyway. And um, to do this type of thing, so talk to Zero and QuickBooks and Google and PayPal and Dropbox, that's you're going to need the bundle, the, the paid bundle. If you just wanted to manipulate JSON and XML really easily, then no, you could get the free version of their product with you just download just that element and it's free. So they if you buy the bundle, which is two hundred and eighty-nine dollars, 
you get royalty free runtime license of course from chillcat you get um all of the that particular bundle so there's 98 base classes there so it's it's pretty good the ones you'll use which was well, the ones we use couldn't live without are uh, the string builder uh, oauth 1 oauth 2 the google auth uh, json array and json object uh, xml is actually just coming to help us out a bit to be honest and the rest and the http so where's the rest oh and socket because we always make a, a point of establishing socket to keep the uh, comms open but you'll need just very quickly you'll need the recap um you'll need uh, the chillcat activex product and then you will need our chillcat wrapper template um now as well as just to go here as well as their base classes which you can see and we're, we're creating the base classes for each and every one of them we've also gone on top of that and creating these task classes and what they do is they make it easy so the example i used earlier at the start was if you want to connect to like google well we could say the, the quickbooks actually what's in, involved in the quickbooks one just to just to uh, show you in fact what is involved can't you see it right so in the connect i make use of uh, the oauth2 class i think we use the socket class because they always do the rest class the string builder class the json class so yeah and you have to basically make, make sure that they all tie together and so on and so forth but from our point of view all you call is the the class name so quickbooks quickbooks dot connect passes the parameters of course and it will establish a connection for you to download the customers it's download underscore customers and it will put them into a queue for you and so on so we the 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 idea behind the, the task classes is to do the heavy work for you and so on but you've got the power of all the other classes should you want to get your hands dirty and do them yourself you know which so you've got the best of both worlds that's the idea cool thank you very much so and our, our class um is 320 dollars uh while it's on beta it's going to go up to 400 but it's uh it's 320. the price the reason why it's it's more expensive we've, we broke a particular rule here actually beyond the truth we always try to keep our products lower priced than their related activex control if it's a wrapper if it's a pure clarion sauce then it's it, it's pure clarion sauce but if it's a wrapper for a third party company but a third party product like cold jock and nbit and chillcat then we do, do try and keep our prices lower than lower than theirs unless we're bringing extra to the party and that's what we're doing with these task classes so really that's the justification but we're only at the moment you know 31 dollars more expensive and considering the work that's going into it believe me it's you know i think it's good value <laughs> I would agree. So, okay. Any other questions? Or shall we shall we start to wrap it up? Um, it's really I'm, I'm happy on both. Oh, uh, we can. You got you got 15 minutes. Oh wow, with these two hours, I thought they were hour and a half. No, two hours. Oh no, you never told me that when you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> It's always been two hours. Sometimes. I think about, Sometimes I'm so longer. used to the Monday ones. I, I mean, yeah, some of the Monday ones go uh, way beyond that as well. Um, yeah, exactly. So, maybe you got some time if you wanted to show something else. Well, um, for me, one of my favourite toys is, is this uh, Jason. I know I go on about it all the time, but it's just it's just so powerful. It really is. But the String Builder that's got a lot of toys to it as well. A bit like um, I don't like uh, compared to uh, competitors and so on, but obviously it's a string manipulation. The, the clues in the name is string mani mani manipulation class, and so on. Uh, but for me, if I have to say what my favourite is, and I use you know any kind of API I'm doing, it's got to be this Jason because it's. Uh, uh, and then you, I think I showed you were, were one of the interfaces you were doing to do with um, uh, the parcel company, and it was XML, and it, it builds in you know a similar manner as well, but it, it's just so simple. So we we look at this and we want to go manipulating some some parts of this, and it's just free form. So you can say, okay, I want the account dot name to equal Noyantis. 
So we're looking at this particular element here. So let's just go and change it. There you go. Thank you. Now I've just changed my JSON and I can go and pass that on to whatever I want to. And the passing of product, uh, passing from one to the other, it's very simple. So if we look at something like one of their base classes, for example, um, uh, HTTP request. Okay. So I'm going to build a request and so on. And well, we'll go one step back. I'm going to do uh, in the rest, I'm going to do uh, a post. So I will do a post, and this is my normal way of doing stuff. I'll do a, a post with a body. So it'll be post, full request, string builder. Okay, so the flow of data, this is some of the things what happens behind the scenes for these, uh, these particular products. That takes a string builder uh, request body and puts the answer in a string builder response. So Bearing that in mind, what I will do is I will use my JSON uh, object. I will build it just like you see in the example here. So I'll, I'll build my JSON. So it could be a, a nice, simple thing of, um, I need webinar, um, no, webinars, first array element, uh, date, and we'll have it as uh, 2018.03. 16 so we'll add that and we'll also have a name and we'll say it's a quickbooks webinar so we've got that and we might have had we're doing them i've done them in the wrong order so we could say last week's and i don't know what was on last week's but we'll just say it was uh last week's and of course we could put the date of that which would be 2018.03.09. Oops. So we just, very simple there, just built a full, perfectly valid JSON. So I say I've got to pass that on to something. I would then take that, I would emit that out. So you could, we've got all the commands for this. So we would go to this and we would say, pass that um, out and I want to emit it into a string builder object. So I will emit it into a string builder, which I've got. That string builder is what I would pass to the uh, rest uh, full uh, full request string builder. So that's how easy it can be done. So you, you emit, you're linking the objects together. So I'm saying, okay, build my content in JSON, emit it into a string builder, and that string builder is one I've already defined, and that's what I'm gonna use for the rest. And so, on. so, and the response comes back in String Builder. So it's great. great. Okay, so the response comes back in a String Builder object. So um, that's great. Now I want to manipulate it a JSON response. So I go back to my JSON object and I can say load it from a String Builder. So I've got my response object. I can't see load for looking. Ah, load String Builder. So I want you to load it from the contents of the string builder, which has just come back from the uh, the rest response, um, but so from the rest uh, post. So that comes back. And to, to show some of that, I'll actually reveal some of our code here, but if you get the classes, you see this anyway. But this is exactly what we do. So if I look at our query, we can see here, I do exactly what I've just said. I will have a, a request to string builders, a request and a response. I'll clear their contents. I'll then, for my rest, I will clear the headers, clear the, que clear the query params. I'll set that I want JSON. I'll pass the actual query param of the query that we want to execute. And then for this, there is no body. So it's instead of full request string builder, it's full request no body string builder. So I pass it the URL. Uh, so it's a get the URL and I just pass it the response that I want the, the the answer to go into. So that gives me my response. And let's have a look at what that query is called. Oh, don't want, sorry, I don't want S. I just want to call to query. So there you go, download customers. So I put form a query. There's my query. Uh, it, it's come back and said true. So I've got a response 200 back from it. So that's brilliant. I clear my JSON content. And just what I said a minute ago, I JSON load string builder uh, of the response, which I know is valid because we've just got an answer from it. I load that into uh, uh, the JSON 
and then I can just go off and manipulate the JSON. And manipulating, there's a size of array, so I want to know how many customers have I got back, that will give me how many have I got back, and I just loop through. And I'm looping through query response dot customer array element, uh, and I've just wrote a little routine to uh, basically put it into a, a, a passed in group structure. So there you go, you've just got a, a sneak preview of some of the, uh, so how it's approached using the actual base classes. Very cool. cool. I, I like the way that they have it. Um, the, 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 how they all work together, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's true yeah. of all of theirs, if you want the truth. I mean, I've really taken to this. I've, obviously, I'm strong on the cold jock stuff because we've done it 10 years. In fact, I need to speak to you. We need, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's middle of June or the 1st of July is technically our 10th, 10-year uh, anniversary of supplying templates to the Clarion market. Wow. So yeah, time flies. I thought it was middle. I thought it was middle of June, but I looked at the first sale the other day. Bear in mind, we are over nine hundred uh, customers now, so I'm quite quite happy with that. So it's Clarion, nine hundred Clarion developers using this stuff. <laughs> um, but yes, basically, uh, or, or over because we just broke nine hundred one last night. But um, I'm I'm pretty good at the, the cold shock stuff, but this stuff just flows. It's really simple in its approach, uh, and the support of Matt has been brilliant. Very cool. Yeah, I, I'm uh, looking forward to playing with this QuickBooks thing. Yeah, cool. Well, and of course, the beauty of the actual li library is, you know, there's so many. If you if you think every everything's got an API now, uh, or yeah. anything that you really want to talk to, and I'd be had. I'd be hard pressed to see if you haven't got something that this wouldn't support, you know, because with with the versatility they've got here, you'd be hard pressed to think of something that it wouldn't actually, you know, I'm not saying you wouldn't have to do work, but I think you've got the core tool set to actually do it. Yeah, I still, I've still got to kind of figure out the uh, customer's keys thing. But when I get to that point, We'll talk. Yes, no problem. I'll <laughs> I'll probably create um, a, a help video, which will be shipped with the product to talk you through the steps. Or, or actually, you've probably heard my voice enough. I might get uh, Wendy. Wendy's now joined Niantis. Um, she's the one who's working on all the classes. So when I say they worked on daily, I mean they, they worked on daily. Um, so yes, I might get Wendy uh, to record it. Um, it'd be a, be a bit clearer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just it's just trying to figure out how to get connected to their their data, I guess, or the, in the easiest way. Whether yeah. they need to set up, I mean, do they set up at a developer account, or do we just attack it onto ours? Or I just I don't know. I think you'd have to, be the best way to do that. You would need their credentials uh, at at least at some point. You'd need their credentials to be able to access their data. Now, whether you give them a, a step by step guide and just say, I need you to click this, click this, click this, and so on and so forth. And then they've given you, and they just provide you with the um, the, the, the particular two keys, the uh, the ID and the secret. If they just provide you with them, that's one you know one thing you could do. They don't want to actually reveal access to their data. They just want to, uh, to do it that way. Then, you know, you could do that. If they, if they trust you, then chances are they'll just let you do it, to be fair. Yeah. But to think about it what the easiest way is yeah but it's, it's the same with zero now zero is not a war of two uh, but you're still going to have to create that uh, an, 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 an entity an application that is allowed to talk to uh, that data and I know from the, the very quick look at Sage one that I looked at Sage one does exactly the same where you have to create something so yeah it's the it's, they all follow a very similar security model yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd have to go through the whole thing of going into production and everything, right? In order to and then plug in their own stuff. They could make their own app, but it would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to sort all this. It gets it's it's it should be simpler. <laughs> <laughs> it should somehow be simpler. Uh, and maybe we'll figure out a way to do that. Oh. Is that what other is that what other applications have to go through the same type of thing to get people signed up to their 
maybe their third party product that accesses QuickBooks? Dropbox didn't, to be fair. No, I think on Dropbox, you just said, I want to be able to, you know, give me my keys to my account and so on and so forth. But that said, you might not be defining an app, but you still, within your admin of your uh, account, you are still generating to, uh, an entity to say, I want to be able to, you know, remote access this data. Not sure about eBay. I've not looked at eBay yet and so on. But, uh, but yeah, you know, you you do have to turn on the facility because it's really security at the end of the day. They do want to try and clump it down right. so they can keep your data secure. They are actually doing, uh, you know, doing you a favor. Okay. We'll just let Bajan do it. He doesn't, he doesn't do it. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so I think we are more or less there. Is it We're done. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it and uh, it give you food for thought, uh, if nothing else. All right. Yeah, this is great. Thank you very much, Andy. I think I'll go ahead and bring it back over here. There we go. Yes, very, very informative. I'm sure we'll come up with more questions on Monday. So for those who uh, don't know, there's a Noantis user group meeting on Monday, and it's at 8 o'clock, Clarion Live time. So <laughs> Yes, cause we, we got caught out, didn't we? <laughs> and we, we our <laughs> clock haven't changed yet, so yes, we got caught out. So. Yeah, because of daylight saving time. Um, so yeah, so, so come on by and uh, ask any more questions or... It's usually, uh, it's always a good session for that matter. We always learn good things. Yeah, the, so, number, the numbers um, are going up. Yeah, definitely. And um, then there's a uh, open webinar Wednesday and the um, that talk on Thursday. And then next Friday, we're doing birthday part two. And uh, we'll be talking about disconnected applications. This is, this is a, this should be really good. I don't know how many people are using disconnected apps, probably not many but i suspect you will be eventually because it's the way of the world now right you want to be able to work anywhere and you want to be able to work when you're connected or not connected so um bruce has made it pretty easy to do this so we'll, we'll be going through that next week and that's it we're going to wrap up thanks again andy very much appreciate uh, you coming by yeah, no, it's, uh, thank you. Thank you all for attending and hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, any questions, uh, you know, feel free to drop us an email. Uh, so, no, thank you very much. There you go. So everybody have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you might be, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.